Everything that they talk about is about money, 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 but they release no resources into the communities. We can't breathe when we have poor people who are put outside of their homes, who don't have resources, who don't have access to health care or anything like that. I can't breathe because of that. I can't breathe when they're using my taxpaying dollars to fund the war that I don't agree with. We got the Miss Jill Stein here that's got a policy, that's got a program, that's got actual things that she's going to be able to implement as president. My name is Jill Stein. I am the Green Party candidate for president, and I'm here to lift up the voices of the people. This is the real convention. It's not just Donald Trump who is a threat to our democracy, who is a fascist threat. It is the Democratic Party as well. Trump interferes uh, typically after the election, and uh, Democrats typically interfere in advance of the election. Some people say that, oh, but the Democrats are the uh, solution to fascism. They're actually not. They are the cause. And let me tell you how that is. Because you had Bill Clinton implementing NAFTA, you know, which sent lots of jobs overseas. You had Barack Obama, who was passing the Wall Street bailouts, which bailed out Wall Street to the tune of trillions of dollars while uh, ordinary homeowners got thrown out of their homes. The, the long and short of it is that about 30 million people have lost their jobs over the last 30 years. Lots of it due to uh, democratic policies. We must be stronger more determined and more committed to saving America. That is what drives the surge to the right when people are insecure and then they're goaded into demonizing others and it becomes a game of divide and conquer. Here in America, we only have Americans. We don't need to be a country dominated by foreign illegal immigrants. Sorry, I don't want you here. And you're demonizing immigrants, which is a lot of you know what the right wing typically does. Democrats are driving those policies. Furthermore, it's the Democrats who are funding the most extreme Republicans. We will make America great again. This may sound kind of crazy. It actually is very crazy. You may have heard of the, um, the Pied Piper uh, strategy, which was how Donald Trump was lifted up by the Hillary Clinton um, press contacts, who lifted up Trump thinking that he would be the easiest Republican to beat because he was the most extreme. But actually, he wasn't. But meanwhile, they put a lot of money into him. In 2022, they're still using that game plan, and they spent in 2022, in the midterms, $50 million funding the most extremist uh, Republican candidates for Senate and Congress. What at first glance looks like a typical campaign message for a Republican primary candidate is actually an ad paid for by Democrats. Democrat service responsible for the content of this ad. It's part of a national strategy. Official Democratic campaign arms and outside groups are pumping millions of dollars into Republican contests in at least seven states, betting that Trump faithful election denying candidates will be less competitive in November. So they help launch the careers of very extreme Republicans because they'll be easier to beat in the general. But in the meantime, they, you know, they launch the uh, political careers of real extremists. So in my view, it's a pox on both of their houses. Neither of them are going to fix this for us. They're both working for Wall Street and the war machine, and they are both a threat to our democracy. So I reject the notion of lesser evilism. And besides, how could you say that the Democrats are the lesser evil when they are conducting the genocide right now? They are slaughtering 200,000 women and children in particular and elders in Gaza right now. With Trump, it's a hypothetical. With Biden-Harris, it's not hypothetical. It's actually happening now. Uh-oh, the ghetto bird's out. You know what the f that means. Channel 5 election season 2024 Democratic National Convention. As you can see, this brick building right here is not an ordinary brick building. This is the other side of the United Center. The Chicago Bulls play there sometimes, but tonight a different game is being played in there, and that's the game of two-party electoral politics. Now, my main man, Eighth Card Saddam, is at a nearby park with the Palestinians and Palestinian supporters speaking to them. We feel betrayed by the Democratic machine. A lot of the Muslim Palestinian community voted Democrat. We sent the $3.5 billion of weapons, 2,500 pounds of dumb bombs. Workers of the world unite. We have nothing to lose but our chains, a world to win. Join the Revolutionary Communist International wherever you are, and watch Channel 5. <laughs> Thank you, man. I'm about to go about two and a half miles away from the Democratic National Convention to a park called Humboldt Park to visit an organization called the Poor People's Army. I don't know if you ever heard of the Poor People's Army, but apparently they're poor, they have an army, and they're, they're meeting in Humboldt Park, so we're going to go tap in and see what's going on.
we are here to live amongst one another because it's our calling here on earth. We're all placed here. Nobody was forced here. We were all put here. So what we're going to do is we're going to live together. We're going to ask for the war to stop in Palestine. That's right. The violence that's plaguing the streets right now is contaminating our whole nation. We want to see a ceasefire here in Chicago. Yes. I can breathe with Jill Stein. Say, I can breathe. I can breathe. I can breathe with those policies. I can breathe. I can breathe. My name is Sherry Honkala, and we're here in Humboldt Park. Our slogan really is, we're not left, we're not right, we're from the bottom, and we're coming for the top. Instead of having uh, our military fly someplace and kill people, we could have our military build luxury housing overnight. Right. Why do you, how do you think like the democratic establishment benefits from having a, an underclass of poor people? They're really invested in building what we call the nonprofit industrial complex. There's a lot of money and never solving issues. The shelter system is a money-making business. A lot of them are privately owned. Private for-profit shelters. These shelters aren't providing any wraparound services at all. They're just providing what are oftentimes substandard, unsafe housing for individuals. Look, I don't mind making money. I love making money, okay? But I hate for the government wasting money. And right now, it's a waste of money. I Fair runs four houses in St. John's. His revenue has quadrupled in the last five years. People have to actually spend money in order to stay there. They can't hold on to their belongings. They employ a gajillion other social workers to justify why they psychologically don't need housing, keep them on waiting list. Yeah. When the reality is that they just need access to affordable housing. Poor whites are hurting just like blacks and uh, Mexicans and Puerto Ricans and our indigenous brothers and sisters. It's just a question of lack of access to education and real information about who's in charge. Is there any particular candidate or political figurehead that stands out to you as somebody that would be, be a good option for this new party? Well, I mean, I love uh, Claudia De La Cruz. I love Cornell West. Um, but I think that the, the candidate that's on, actually on the majority of the ballots across this country and has the actual infrastructure and the ability to potentially win would be Dr. Jill Stein. Right. For those who don't know, what is the war machine? Okay, so very simply put, we are now spending about half of our congressional budget, a trillion dollars a year, on endless wars. Endless wars and 800 military bases around the world. We are spending more than the next 10 nations combined, the next 10 biggest spenders. We're spending more, mostly on weapons. So it's about half of this humongous budget that's actually going to the war profiteers, the war contractors. They're making huge profits on this. It is an industry which has bought its way into Congress, and it provides a lot of campaign contributions. It, it provides lobbyists who are defining policy, and it creates these projects that provide jobs in a whole lot of different districts, and that's also how they buy the support of our politicians, such as they are. APAC is also part of this. So APAC is also pouring money into races, buying politicians, to basically gin up endless conflict, which is great if you're a war contractor, and they're the ones, you know, who are buying these policies. 20 recipients in Congress, the House and the Senate, of APEC money in the 2022 midterm cycle, according to Open Secrets. But for the American people and the people of the world, this is an utter disaster, and they're embroiling us in endless wars that are not making us safer. They're actually making us less safe, not more safe, creating failed states like Libya and Iraq, just wrecking havoc on the world. We need a foreign policy based on international law, human rights and diplomacy. Right now it's mostly based on, on raw military power. On a national domestic level, do you think that the, the media division machine is doing a similar thing with Americans themselves? Absolutely, the media machine is really critical here. In fact, that's why the First Amendment is the first, because we need a free press, we need freedom of speech, we need the right to protest, so that we, the people, can be informed. The role of the press is really critical. We're supposed to have a press serving as a watchdog to power. Right now, most of the uh, corporate press 
are lap dogs to power. They are not watchdogs to power. So they're interested in landing the next interview with some, you know, with some big important uh, elected official. More interested in that. So they're not going to give a tough interview. They're not really, you know, uh, scrutinizing policies and informing people. If we're going to have a democracy, we have to have informed voters who can make decisions. And right now, we are kept in the dark. What's up, guys? Hope you're having a great week. What if I told you I could give you one free gigabyte of data anywhere in the world? Well, that's a reality. Today's video is sponsored by a company called Saley, a new eSIM service app brought to you by Nord Security. It's an eSIM card plan that basically works like a VPN from your phone. That's right, you, and allows you to connect to a cellular network in over 150 countries. For example, if you have T-Mobile or Sprint or something like that, and you go to Canada or Mexico, and then as soon as you cross the border, they say, oh my gosh, welcome to Canada, welcome to Mexico, and they start charging you exorbitant fees to use your phone, with Saley, that can all go away. You'll also be able to avoid scammers selling fake SIM cards, and also long lines at the airport. Nobody wants that. So if you're someone that travels a lot, or you're somebody like me who's now trying to take Channel 5 global into every continent on Earth, I would definitely consider getting an eSIM plan with Saley. I'll make it easy for you. Go to www.saley.com slash channel 5 and enter the coupon code channel 5. That'll give you one gigabyte of free data. No matter where you're at, even if you're in the US right now, you can just get a free gig of data. So shout out to them for sponsoring this video. Hope you guys like the service. And by the way, if it happens to not be compatible with your device down the line, there's free refunds. All right, guys, back to the streets. Ruben here has been an absolute soldier in this process. Ruben, what do you think is the number one issue facing America right now? I mean, there are like a lot of like poor problems in like Philadelphia, like homelessness and, yeah, and drug problems too. It's like, we do have to solve that. Grants pass, being passed. If you heard, if you heard about that, that's the Supreme Court case that got passed like three months ago that allowed municipalities across the country to literally criminalize homelessness starting in Grants Pass, Oregon. This all started in Grants Pass, Oregon. That city had passed a law that said people who camp on city streets could be subject to citations, fines, and ultimately removal from those public spaces. Advocates for people who are homeless there sued, saying that the law amounted to cruel and unusual punishment, a violation of the Eighth Amendment, because it would criminalize sleeping, a basic human need. And specifically, it's been Democratic governors like Kathy Hochul and Gavin Newsom specifically in California who have jumped on that law and here here in Illinois in Rosemont, which is at O'Hare. Yeah, um, they just criminalized it with the exception for uh, being outside like Nike stores and stuff. The Democratic Party has kind of like shifted into a very like concessionary position, even though it's supposed to be like the left party. Mm -hmm. And like, I also think like a big part of that is obviously tied to like the Democratic Party's funding of the genocide in Palestine, especially with like the party kind of forming a rift between like the more like center left part of the party, I guess, and the far left part of the party, or at least them trying to. They've kind of just made the whole party move into this position where on a lot, they're just not that different from the Republicans. The thing is, is that on a lot of home front issues, like Democrats and Republicans still work against each other, obviously, but like when it comes to more corporatized issues like baseline poverty and homelessness, they just have a lot of the same goals because a lot of them are just corporate. So I just think they're like weaponizing things that really hurt people on a daily basis because rich people can go and get abortions. Like across history, rich women have always been able to get abortions regardless of what the law is. So for me, I'm like, I just feel like they're using things to make um, people want to vote for them. And so for me, I would say it's the lesser of two evil thing has been going on for eight years. Like this is not democracy. We need to be honest with ourselves about the kind of country we live in. Let's be honest. I mean, the Democrats did, got away with uh, taking away the safety net. And let's be real too. When they passed the New Deal, they weren't thinking about the people, they're thinking about the, the entities, the corporate entities that would benefit from the subsidies. Let's be honest with ourselves too. It wasn't about the poor person in Mississippi. It was about the corporate farmers that were starting to develop at that era and figuring out how do we subsidize them. That's what the food stamp program is about. There's something wrong in this country telling people it is okay to work three jobs, not see your kids, not see your loved ones, not take a vacation, and God forbid you get sick, okay? And I still got a job at home because I'm a mother. Because let's not forget, I don't get a day off. And I gotta figure all that out. How are we gonna eat? How are we gonna pay rent? How are we gonna pay the utility bills that every single thing went up after COVID? Not one thing stayed the same except salaries. The only thing that stayed the same in this country is the, what, the minimum wage. Even though everything else went up. 
and we have a Democratic president or a Republican president, then a Democratic president, Republican president, and neither party ever talks about what is really going on in this world. Because I'm not even going to say the country. What is really going on in this world? This, there is no scarcity. It is how do we pit people against each other so they're too distracted to see everything that I'm too addicted to consuming and how much profit I'm making and more profit. How many more houses one individual can have? How many yachts can one individual have? And you're gonna arrest me now that I make a tent city? Yeah. So if I take the scraps from the trash and make some kind of shelter for me and my children, regardless whether I have mental health issues, regardless whether I'm an addict, regardless of whether I am a female, male, whatever, I am a human being first. With what conscience are you criminalizing right. poverty? Right. And, you, and it's not gonna stop just in the United States. The poor of the world, not just this country, are fed up. People in Gaza are fed up. People in Kensington are fed up. People in San Juan who just went through a storm and do not have electricity because the government that they belong to said you're not our country, so we're not gonna give you federal dollars to fix your, your grid. Energy provider Luma said roughly 560,000 people, more than a third of customers, were without power across Puerto Rico by the end of the day. The island's grid is still being repaired seven years after it was wiped out by Hurricane Maria. And let's not leave out rural communities. I live in Haines City, Polk County, Florida, okay? But do you think that the poor and rural communities have transportation? They don't. There's absolutely not even a sidewalk to walk on because I am giving the message of stay poor, stay hidden, and die silently. Okay? If I get a job, how do I get to that job? If I even get it when I'm in a rural community. Okay? Let's not leave those folks behind. There are hundreds of thousands of people living in trailers across the United States who are paying $1,600 a month in rent for a trailer. A trailer. Have you ever been inside a trailer? Yeah. A used trailer. Do you know how that smells? Definitely. Okay. Sixteen hundred dollars. Can you afford sixteen hundred dollars to be living in a trailer? How many jobs do you need to have? Because I personally have two. I have seasonal jobs and I have other jobs, part-time jobs that I do. I have a girlfriend who works three jobs to live in a trailer. What do you want to be when you grow up? What do I want to be when I grow up? Yeah. I don't know. Something makes me get money. Mm -hmm. Try and get money. Like. Money's hard. You're, you're in the poor people's army. Oh, no, 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 no. Trying to be in the bag chaser's army. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm that guy. If you had a million right now, what would you do? I'd go to the store. you go to the store <laughs> to get <laughs> to get what? You have a million dollars. You got, you're going to go to the store? I'm hungry. I'm, I want to get that Puerto Rican restaurant food. What are you about to get? S some pastelillos, empanadas, anything. I'm hungry. Okay. Want to give a message to the, the kids out there? Um, work hard and and don't be depressed. What about cigarettes? Don't don't smoke. What about drugs? Don't do drugs, cause I know people do drugs and they look weird. I went to Philly for a little bit and people do drugs there a lot. For real? Yeah, this lady was just dancing and screaming. She was skinny and her whole face was whole dry. Probably off that trank. You ever heard of trank before? Nope. My name is Anthony Mejia Colon, Anthony Gabriel Mejia Colon. I'm Puerto Rican and Mexican, and I'm I'm part of the Poor People's Army. I want to be treated like an adult. 13 or 12 is like an adult, basically. I'm about to have a talk with my mom about that. What is your favorite sport? Football. So what is your favorite snack? Takis. You, you too young to do Takis, sir, because your stomach. Hello, sir. How you doing? Doing well, sir. My name is Anthony Mejia Colon. What's your name, sir? My name is Captain Join. I'm one of the High Times Freedom Fighters and a lifetime yippee. I'll be one of the speakers today. Where are you going to say in the speaking? You know, I never know till I get up there, but it'll be a surprise for all of us. All right. How was the riots in the 60s? Uh, the 1968 riots have been very well documented and they were horrible. Was, Chicago was full of the delegates and full of the protesters and the protesters had no place to stay. They were trying to sleep in Lincoln Park. At dusk, the cops went into Lincoln Park and the footage is in Chicago 8 and they just wailed anybody that was standing. Just started clubbing the whole crowd down. Uh, it was dubbed a police riot for a reason because we're a pretty peaceful crew. Uh, the cops, sometimes not so much. But they're saying if we follow the rules this time, they won't arrest us. So we're down with that. We'll see what happens. My name is Chris the Anarchist Ryan, and I'm here from Columbus, Ohio, representing the Columbus, Ohio chapter of the Youth International Party, better known as Yippies. 
Yippies. Yippies. Y i p p i e s. Yippies, sir. Yippie. I'm a yippie. Yeah. Oh, you're a yippie, sir. Yeah, I'm a yippie. May I ask how old you are? I'm 66 years old. I've been a member of the Youth International Party for 50 years. I'm the founder of the Ohio Hemp Fest at Ohio State University, or I should say the Ohio State University. Abby Hoffman was my mentor. I am also a national co-founder of critical mass bicycle protests in both Columbus, Ohio, and here in Chicago, Illinois, where I used to work as a bike messenger and racing sailor in the late 90s. Follow your dream. You heard him. Follow your dreams. Never give up your dreams, guys. You're a young reporter. You're obviously interested in doing journalism and moving into uh, media arts. I don't That's kind of a dream for you, an aspiration, something you want to see happen in your life. And you're not Follow doing it. what you're doing. Not do, yeah, exactly. Do what you're doing. Keep it up. Because what you're doing is actually really very, very important. You're right, sir. And 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 so yeah, you know, stay close, stay close to your dream. Follow your heart. Follow, Follow your heart. Don't dream it, be it. Yeah. Nice yeah. to meet you. I'm signing off. Have a nice day. Never give up your dreams. You could be whatever you want. You could be gay. You could be anything. Thank you for watching Channel Five. Peace out. Channel Five Live Worldwide Hollywood and Vine. Fuck the authority. Channel 5 News. Channel 55. We don't fuck with Custers. And 5 is the best number. <laughs> Alright guys, seems like that's a wrap. As you guys can see, the suit is off. I'm super uh, tired, so I'm going to get a slice of pizza and orange soda and then open up my laptop and open up my favorite application, Adobe Premiere Pro. Love it. Nothing ever goes wrong with that great application. In fact, if you're watching this and you work for Adobe, shoot me your contact info. I would like to call you and tell you how much your software means to me. Just kidding. Oh, God. Is there some other shit happening up here? Fuck. All right. DNC, Democratic National Convention. Looks like there's a Planned Parenthood uh, abortion bus up here at this rally. Mean, which means I gotta go. Oh god, there's protesters. There's protesters outside of it. All right. Oh, looks like here we are. Third installment Democratic National Convention pro life pro choice face off. Here we go. Abortion is murder. Abortion is oppression. Abortion is murder. Abortion is oppression. Abortion is. Every little girl, every little boy is worth us working together to do whatever is in our capacity to save a human being from a violent, evil death. Pregnancy can be incredibly challenging to people's health. Um, and women do die during pregnancy. In the context of having, you know, dangerous pregnancy in this country, we certainly shouldn't be eliminating the opportunity for folks to, to maintain their health during pregnancy. Abortion is murder! Abortion is oppression! We took these photos!